Now, we look at the terminologies. Like I mentioned earlier, some of the terminologies as used in the video are explained here. So we are looking at the first one, application programming interface. These terminologies are things you need to understand and know because while you're doing an exam, it can come up as a question. It can come up, you know, as a as a way of description. And if you don't understand them, you'll not be able to understand the question. So API is basically a set of routines and standards or protocols tools for building software applications to access web-based software application or web tool. So API is basically like an interface, you know, for you to connect to applications that are running on the internet. So when you say an interface, this interface is being, you know, uh, made active or made possible through the protocols and, you know, standards that have been set in place. So this API, uh, for you, you need to understand what the API is when you see it in a question. Then broadcast. Broadcast is transmission, is a one-to-many kind of trans transmission, whereby one device is sending devices, I mean, sending traffic to several other devices. This is your broadcasting. To the concept, you need to understand. Then we have the community cloud, which is a system in which cloud infrastructure is provisioned for an exclusive you know, use by a set of consumers. Like I explained, it could be for security, uh, it could be for a particular mission, it could be for policy, maybe a government body. So a community cloud is set up for exclusive use by a specific community. Then we have denial of service. Denial of service is a kind of attack you know, that is preventing uh, authorized access. This is, you have an author authority, you are, you are legally authorized to access a particular information, but denial of service will prevent you. For instance, you are trying to log into Google, for instance, and you cannot check your email. Because a DNS, maybe if a DNS, a DOS attack has been launched against Google, then you'll be trying to access your email that you have authority to access, but you can't access. So denial of service is deny you uh, the use of a service. So this is an attack. It's a very common attack. Then we have encapsulation. So encapsulation comes into place when you are talking about uh, OSI and network uh, uh, transmission, transmission control protocol, TCIP models. When you are talking about layers, networking, and traffic or data moving from one layer of the OSI model to the other, or one layer of the TCIP model to the other. So, encapsulation is enforcing of data and hiding code during a phase of software deployment or op operational use. So, in cybersecurity, I'm making reference to uh, OSI model because it is common then when you are transmitting data from one layer to the other, you encapsulate the data, you know, making you are encoding the data in such a way that. It can be uh, transmitted safely or it can also be transmitted efficiently. So you, you are hiding the code, you are hiding the uh, data inside into a format that can easily be understood by the layer that is receiving it or by the device that is trying to process it. So encapsulation uh, is used when transmitting data. And then we have other terminologies like encryption, which is the process of converting the message from its plain text to a cipher text that is you know, not easily understood. File transfer protocol is a protocol or program that is used to transfer files between hosts. You know, so this is a service, is a kind of service that runs on devices or run on network. And then remember it goes through a port uh, 21 in, the, in your devices. Then we have fragment attack. In a fragment attack, an attacker fragment traffic in such a way that you are not able to make use of the data package. It's just like, you know, breaking something that's supposed to be together into pieces. Then we have infrastructure as a service, which I mentioned earlier. Infrastructure as a service, you know, this is where the provider, a cloud provider or a provider of a service is providing core computing, storage and network. You're basically providing what's supposed to be an hardware as a service. So you don't need to buy your own hardware. All you need is to connect to an IAS service provider. For instance, if you need some kind of servers and you don't have the money to purchase the server, or you just need the server for a brief number of time, you can set up your, your applications you know, on someone that provides the infrastructure. So your, your application is running on an infrastructure that is not your own, a computing infrastructure. It could be a storage infrastructure or a network hardware. So infrastructure as a service is when you offer this hardware. Then we have platform as a service. Platform as a service is when, you know, web authoring or application development 
environment allows applications to build in the cloud before they are deployed so this is a platform on which you you build an application so this uh PAS service is a service that is offered to people who need the platform for developing their applications without owning that platform so you just pay for this platform use and then after use your contract or your agreement with them ceases so platform as a service uh, is a concept that you need to understand very well as you study then we have software as a service this is when a cloud customer you know uses cloud applications running within a cloud infrastructure for instance you can log into a cloud infrastructure and be using their um, you know accounting software so you use it because you are you don't need necessarily need to own the software maybe you need to just run some accounting project then you subscribe for it pay and you after using the software you get your information you get all the data or whatever you need and then the contract ends so some people offer these services it is it's called software as a service so this is a concept you need to understand you can read the definition properly then we have hybrid cloud like i mentioned is a combination of public storage and private storage you know where some this critical data will reside on the public and then some resides on the private this is common with organizations who want to do like a backup sometimes they have a, a copy of their cloud within the organization completely under their control and then they have some other data on cloud on the public cloud for easy access or other so mixture of private and public is what is making up a hybrid cloud then we have a public cloud which is a cloud infrastructure that is provisions for open use by the general public a private cloud is opposite which is used for cloud computing platform that is implemented within a corporate firewall it's exclusive to the organization that owns it then other terminologies you need to take note of is internet protocol version 4 is a standard protocol for transmitting data from source to destinations in a packet switch communication network we are talking about the rules internet protocol is what you use to transmit data on the internet basically you know so when communicating on the internet you know the internet protocol comes into play and that is why we have internet protocol addresses then we have man in the middle man in the middle is an attack where an adversary positions himself in between the user and the system so you are using your system uh from your end user as an end user you are trying to access a server meanwhile there's someone in between you and the server so we send the message to the server someone intercepts the message and replies to you and you think the message is coming from the server so this is a man in the middle man standing in between you know uh user and the system then we have oversized packet attack so this is a situation where an attacker has purposely sent a network packet that is larger than what is expected or what has been provisioned for within a network so basically it will choke the network that's what it's going to do so the packet is too large and then it disrupts the flow of traffic and then it, it this can lead to so many other complications like denial of service because when the packet you know when the traffic is jammed by oversized packets then system receiving the information will not be able to process it then your devices tool will not understand uh the packet because it has been inflated beyond the normal side you know so it causes a failure packet is a representation of data or network layer of the open system interconnection model so packet is what you use when you are talking about data flowing at the network layer you know this is where you are talking about um, routing of information so a packet is what we describe the kind of data please you need to also study your osi layer very well and have an understanding of this concept other terminologies include spoofing this is faking or sending email sending address of a transmission to gain a legal entry you know you are pretending to be someone so that you can gain access into a system that is secure a payload is the primary action of a malicious code attack so uh, a payload can be configured to do different things so the action the primary action is uh, you know of the malicious code is what we call a payload then we have the payment card industry data security standard you know this is a standard that applies to merchants and services who provides credit or debit card transactions so if you're into a fintech and you know or you're working for a fintech and you provide payment services you know this standard is 
very peculiar to such industries and then uh, you need to abide by these standards these are as a cyber security professional you need to understand it so this is a common standard too that may come up in questions or you expected to understand or know in domain four of cyber certified in cyber security then we have oversized packet attack you know, I can mention this, you know, sending a packet that is larger than expected. Then we have protocols. Protocols are basically set of rules, you know, or formats and procedures to implement and control communication between systems. So when the device is communicating with another device, there are protocols that makes the, the two devices to be able to understand each other because each of them will abide by the same protocol, which means they abide by the same rules. It makes it possible for two devices to understand the traffic or the messages they are sending to each other. Other terminologies include the VLAN, virtual uh, local area network, is a logical group of workstations. They may necessarily not be in the same physical or geographical area, but they are logically grouped together. You know, they could be network devices or hosts that appear to be on the same LAN. So they appear to be on the same LAN but they, are, they may not be on the same geographical land. So a, a, a device could be in Africa, another device could be in Europe, and then they will be on the same villa. Then we have the VPN, is a virtual private network. So this is a network that is built on other network and they provide secure communications, you know, for transmission or transmitting uh, between two networks. It's basically like a tunnel for secure communication. So. When you enter into a VPN, you are basically securing having direct communication with a particular server, you know, without interference. So it provides secure communication. Then we have the WLAN, which is a wireless local area network. It's a group of computers and devices that are located in the same vicinity. You know, they form a network based on radio transmission rather than a wired connection. Basically, a wireless LAN is a LAN that is made up of uh, Wi-Fi connection or radio connections, not using cable. Once it's not using cable, it's a wireless, wireless. So a LAN that is wireless. Then we have the concept or the terminology called zero trust. Zero trust is, a, a, is when you remove the belief or design belief that the network has any trusted space. Or ensure and ensuring security is managed at each possible level, representing the most granular asset. So zero trust is basically saying that when someone or a device is working on the network, every time the device is trying to access an information, it will have to go through check. The network assumes that the device is not trusted, basically. So you don't treat requests from a user or a device based on trust like okay this device is already existing in my network therefore you grant the device access no zero trust is saying no trust every device on your network is potential you know uh threat or is an attacker and uh, is potentially compromised so every one of them needs to go through check or security at every level you know making sure nothing is uh, compromised so basically that is what zero trust is talking about and then we have micro segmentation so this is building on the zero trust strategy meaning that it breaks a land a local area network into small highly localized zones using firewall that means for instance if you have a network that has like a hundred uh users then you can break those users into like 10 10 10 which gives you another a 10 micro you know network within a larger network so when you segment your network in that way it means that if somebody is moving from one segment of 10 users to another segment you will have to go through checks which means that each segment does not trust have zero trust for each other basically that is what uh micro segmentation is doing it helps to achieve the zero trust strategy so these are the domain objectives in IIT to cyber certified in cyber security domain for network security domain learners should be able to do certain things these are the objectives so every learner of this domain should be able to explain network security concept you should be able to recognize common networking terms and models you should be able to identify common protocols and ports and their secure counterparts you should be able to identify types of network threats and attacks 
should be able to discuss common tools used to identify and prevent threats. You should also be able to identify common data center terminology. You should be able to recognize common cloud service terminology. And then you should be able to identify secure network design terminologies. And also you should be able to practice the terminology of and review network security concepts. So these are the uh, like the about 10 basic objectives of network security. So as you prepare, as you prepare for your certification exam, ensure that you are able to achieve these things. Ensure these objectives are met. When you are reading and you are able to uh, fulfill any of these objectives, then you know that you are ready to you know take the exam or you are ready uh, to be certified you know in cyber security so thank you for watching cyber culture interface if this video has been of help in any way please like share and subscribe to this channel so that we can keep creating more uh, valuable contents for you thank you